So that, let's get into setting up. Um, you know, that's what, what we're here to, to learn about. So what, what, you, what is Sentinel? It's a SIM um, and it mixes SOAR, security orchestration and response together and allows you to have some level of artificial intelligence or AI and NL with it. Um, so first and foremost, you know, SIM fundamentals, you need to be able to collect your data, you need to, need to be able to detect um, incidents and events um, within there and you need to be able to investigate to make sure what's going on and then be able to respond. So Sentinel does all that out of the box. It is limitless in terms of cloud speed and scale. So with Sentinel, you know, as your business grows and your endpoints grows and your customers grow, Sentinel can grow with you uh, and it can also go the other way as well. Uh, it's easy to integrate with your existing tools. So if you're in Linux, you know, you're not just having to run Windows devices. If you're in other cloud environments, if you're in GCP, AWS, we can bring all those data feeds straight into Sentinel uh, and be able to monitor those. Um, you get faster threat protection, so you've got the AI by your side. Um, not only that, you know, you're not just fighting, um, I suppose, the threat actors on your own. You Microsoft have got the skin in the fight, so you're getting all that threat intelligence enrichment of your data feeds from Microsoft, and that's free out of the box. You can connect that up straight away. So what does it look like? Um, that's a, a Sentinel dashboard in, in kind of the, the light view on the right hand side there. Um, there's no infrastructure set up or maintenance cost. Um, SIM as a service is available straight away in Azure as a portal. Um, scale automatically so there's no limits. Um, and then if you're using a partner to do this, you can use things like Lighthouse to give them permission. You go in there, you just click on your, the partner that's providing the service. They get a view to your estate, which is quite key. And the, the big takeaway with that is they are not moving logs from your environment to theirs. So from a GDPR perspective, um, all your alerts and logs remain within your environment. Your provider is not taking those or making copies of them. They are taking a view of it only and being able to respond to, to incidents and alerts. So let, let's kind of touch on these key areas with Sentinel. So collection is really key. Um, we need to be able to collect information uh, from a variety of, of areas within your, your estate. So out of the box, there is a bunch of data connectors you can go and click on and join up your estate. You know, from the Microsoft products, we can definitely do that. We do public clouds. Partners, we've got data connectors for pretty much most of the, the main ones. You can check that um, before you commit, because uh, obviously the data connectors are there, they're in public. There's some in public preview, there's some in private preview, and there's always more being developed. And there's GitHubs and repositories where partners are updating and making their own data connectors to connect to Sentinel because there's so many people now using this product that they're seeing the benefit of having data connectors out of the box ready for their customers to use. Um, legacy SIM, so if you have already got a SIM in the estate and you want to put that into the cloud as you build the confidence up with, with Sentinel, if you're not there yet, you can certainly do that. You can bring in your identity options or your IAM, so your AD and on-premise sources and plug that into Sentinel so you get that wide view of, of your estate. So apps, users, infrastructure, yeah, all that good stuff. So all these sources can come in and they, if there isn't a connector, that's, that's, that's no problem. So we can take syslog and kef, um, so standard formatting, standard headers, standard templates, and you just build that connector yourself. So it's yeah, it's really, really, really easy to, to be able to do this. Um, again, just another slide kind of covering this in, in more detail. Um, so yeah, just bringing in all this information. Um, and it's not just about cloud information and cloud data and cloud applications of VM. All the on-prem stuff can be pushed across too. Um, and you can tailor and tune what you're pushing across. So all of a sudden you're not gonna just check in everything and set on the cost skyrockets. You can tune that before it actually gets to the cloud and maintain and monitor that, that kind of cost, what you're putting in there. Uh, going forward and certainly your partner can can help you with that with proof of concepts. Um, second bit, visualization. So this is key. This is one of my favorite ones. So being able to use workbooks to, to have that graphical interface. So although you've kind of got the instance tab and you can have the world map and see where instances are occurring, all that good stuff, the powerful side of using workbooks is you can create dashboards. So for senior management, for your CISOs, you can monitor to see you know, how many alerts you get, so the events per second, um, were certain endpoints being compromised or certain endpoints being targeted 
Um, where in the estates, you know, are you being attacked? Where in the world where these attacks come from? You can create these your workbooks to visualize the data that you want to see, um, whether that's, you know, the SOC analyst all the way through to the CISO or to the board. Um, all this information is there um, and it integrates well with the rest of the pro productivity suite for, for Microsoft. So if you're using Power BI and all that kind of good stuff, you can create your own dashboards, and draw all this information in. Um, so, yep. I think I've covered that. So yeah, just gaining insight to one or more data sources. So again, really key thing. So visualizing data and all these data sources because there's so much information flowing is key. Um, I, I find this really useful. Um, I have found it useful being on the other side um, when using Sentinel. It allows you to be quite interactive. So yeah, you've got this is just showing you a demo for the last 14 days of all the sign-in analysis. So there's 4,000 sign-ins, 3.6K of them were successful, 202 of them weren't, um, and 186 are pending user actions. So, you know, this may be that an account has been locked out. Um, no one's tried to go and reset the passwords. You may want to have someone investigate this. So this is typically what an MSSP will be doing on your behalf. They'll be monitoring the estate, looking at these alerts, seeing what's going on, going in, and just making sure no one was successful at breaching, breaching the perimeter or breaching the lower levels of that defense in depth. So, you know, as you've probably been spoken about this week, the zero trust, defense in depth, never trust, and all, all that, all these good kind of principles. Um, you kind of, if you think of it of an onion, you start peeling the onion, as you kind of go through it, you get a different layer of security. With Sentinel, you kind of get all those alerts, all that information across that stack. So if you're looking at the OSI model, um, or, or anything else, you can have getting all those alerts across the, you know, the infrastructure, the network, the application, all that good stuff. So the analytics, again, really, really powerful uh, ability. Here. So out of the box, your provider, uh, your partner, your MSSP is going to be able to have alerts and incidents out of the box, be able to go away and analyze to see what's going on. So Typically, most sims will rag services, so they'll traffic like the severity of the instance or the alert, so high, medium, low. Um, so you can see yeah, what's going on there. That, so it's an APT actor that's in the estate. It's typically mapped to an IOC, so indication of compromise or an IOA, indication of anomaly or an activity. That's typically known with that threat actor. Um, it's been seen elsewhere within the world. So the Microsoft Threat Intelligence has kind of fired across some analytics to be able to, for your uh, MSSP to be able to go away and just detect if anything else is happening in, in your area with that. Um, so anything else there? This so SSH brute force, so that's down at medium uh, because it probably wasn't successful. So what's happening there is someone is literally just checking credentials at an open SSH trying to get into to your estate. That is alerted and popped up here and your MSSP will be able to see that go away and just make sure nothing further happened or was that threat actor trying to target just one endpoint or were they trying to target multiple? Has anyone clicked on a link? Has there been a URR uh, or an email or a phishing email that's landed in the estate that's directed someone here and now it's another part of the attack that's ongoing. So yeah, the, the one language, so that's probably key to mention here. So. The language that you can go away and do kind of thread hunting is custom query language, um, so KQL queries. Um, that's across the whole Microsoft security stack. So once you've kind of picked that up, you, you'll pretty much be able to use it across all the Microsoft products. Um, and yeah, using that threat intelligence is quite key with the analytics. So it's no point just having all the alerts and being able to, to go through and check and challenge every single one. You need to be based on threat. And that threat analytics are fed straight in um, to, to the product. You can also trigger automatic playbooks. So, you know, what, what does that mean? What, what is a playbook? So this is the sole capability. So security, orchestration and response. Um, you're able then to, to perform some level of automation within there. So that could be something quite simple, right? So you get an instant or an alert. Um, someone has set up a playbook that sets up a Teams channel that draws in a SOC tier one, tier two, tier three analysts, depending on the severity of it um, within your MSSP. Um, that enables them straight away to go away and correlate and see what's going on within that instance and set up a little team to go away and make sure nothing further has happened. That's on the simple end. On the more complex end, you could have things to trigger to, to send emails, to send text messages, to lock down certain boxes or endpoints, um, all the way to running further, further queries. 
uh, really, really powerful too. Um, and this is the, the the NL that's kind of built in. Um, so there's two options, the, the Microsoft one or your third party provider, your MSSP or your SOC provider can bring their own NL in if they've developed it. But what, what does this kind of do? It's, it's just reducing uh, um, alert fatigue. That's the word I'm trying to look for. So alert fatigue in a SOC is quite key. Um, th these analysts are literally looking at screens day in, day out, 24 seven on shift pattern. Um, they're just seeing traffic flowing, 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 alerts coming in. So bringing machine learning in to kind of maybe cover some of the more tier one type type incidents. So the, the, the more basic stuff is quite key. And then the machine learning is also then able to, to see where an attack is maybe materializing. And it's not just on one endpoint, it's on multiple endpoints. One person in the organization has clicked on an email versus 100 people on, in the organization have clicked on it. Machine learning will loop all that to kind of gather to, to give the SOC analyst um, some better insight to see what's going on in your state, which is really key. Um, and then instant. So if something has happened, this is kind of your your instance page. If something's ongoing, you can see here. Um, this would be what a SOC analyst will be seeing day in day out. Uh, the owner is unassigned, so straight away you're going to want to get someone assigned to that. That can be done with the playbook. Um, you want to see the events. Uh, so where you go down right hand side. Have I got my cursor? There we go. In the evidence side. So you know what's the evidence? What's the IOCs? What's the IOAs? So we've got five events that have triggered you, one alert, there's no bookmarking. So what entities have they targeted? They've targeted three accounts. Right now there's no hosts, but there's three IPs being involved in, in this instance. So AWS, uh, someone's monitoring or trying to target the credentials, but that's come across from an AWS data connector from your AWS environment straight into Microsoft Sentinel, um, and you're able to respond to, to this. Um, really, really key um, and a really, you know, again, a really powerful page to be able to see. So from a SOC analyst, if you're logging into this or your MSSP or your SOC provider, you they can see within your estate, right, there's 42 open instance, 42 of those are new. Um, no one is in progress in, in this, this instance here of uh, working through any of them. So right now, Today, we've got 42 instances that need to be sorted. We need to go away and see what's going on. We need to assign those to a bunch of SOC analysts, tier one, tier two, tier three, depending on the severity of them, to go away and make sure nothing serious is happening. If it is serious, what we're going to be able to do to respond to that. And that's what an MSSP is all, all about. So again, you know, from uh, your MSSP's point of view, it makes life easier for them. So. You can add tags and comments. So it's pretty much like a ticketing system within you. You can add all those comments and tickets and bookmarking um, to make life life easier. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it with, with this one. So the visualization for me, again, I, I love visualization. I think this makes life a lot easier, especially if you're in trying to map to see what's going on. So you, know, you can see straight here, uh, this is where the incident occurred. So you've got not anonymous login. So where the system or the estate and the SIM or one of the endpoint has detected, right, there's a login going on here. We're not sure where it's from, who it's from. Uh, they've now jumped into this box with this user account. They've then pivoted or moved laterally to different uh, boxes within the estate. You've seen different sign on. You've seen things being downloaded within the estate. They're moving laterally. There's privilege escalation. So they've gone from a uh, a normal user to an admin or sysadmin, they're creating extra accounts. You can start to see all these visually within in the estate, and you can start to see a timeline of when this is occurring. So, you know, because the stock is 24 7, 365 days a year, you'd like to think that they'll pick this up and, and shut it down straight away. But unfortunately, you know, sometimes um, instance and alerts do, you know, do uh, progress past that. And, you know, as we're aware, um, the industry and the sector, you know, it, Unfortunately, right now there, there's so much um, going on within the cyber space or cyber warfare or whatever you want to want to want to call it. Um, there is a lot of incidents going on with, out, you know, out there in, in the wild. I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, so it's it's been able to track and respond to those. Um, so yeah, certainly you know visually seeing these are, are you know quite key. You can click on any one of these nodes to to find down in, in further information. You can. Go, go as far as getting remote access to those boxes and running scripts or bash bash code within there um, just to see you know any further information or running further uh, queries to get more further information. Okay. 
have a look. So again, in a deeper insight with the, the automation, again, this is quite key. So this is the remote access. So you can right click on the box, go into that machine. I've kind of covered that and just kind of follow through what has happened. Look at the URL uh, and kind of go and see what was happening. With Risk IQ now being uh, acquired by Microsoft, you're going to start to see as the, this year goes on, those that information, the APIs and the risks and threat intelligence being enriched even further. Um, what what was likely to occur is it'll probably be rebranded into the Microsoft Security Stack. Uh, don't quote me on the name. Uh, Microsoft loves changing the name, so it could be uh, Defender for Threat Intelligence um, or External Footprinting or something along, along those lines. Um, but yeah, it'll be really a really powerful tool. So what that is, it allows your your MSSP, your SOC, uh, your SIM provider to have a level of OSIM, so open source intelligence gathering, um, to go away and check, right, someone's clicked on this link, Microsoft Sentinel um, is telling me it's malicious. Can I go and see where that's mapped into? Can I go and see who's registered that domain? What infrastructure is assigned to it? If I know what infrastructure is assigned to it and there's extra IPs or extra domains or websites and names, I can use that then to go and do th further threat hunting within my estate to see, right, I've clicked on this link. This is one URL. I've used now the Defender for Threat Intelligence or Risk IQ or another OSINT platform um, to then further enrich my knowledge of this threat or threat actor and dive deeper within your estate just to make sure there's no other IOCs or indications of compromise or indications of anomalies going on. Um, really key um, because if a threat actor has been successful once, no doubt they're going to be trying again to, and to move laterally and pivot and get privilege escalation within your estate. This then yeah, gives you some more, more graphical interfaces, some more automation. And it's not just, I suppose, um, virtual machines, you're going to get network devices. Um, you can go all the way through to connecting your ICS system up to, to Sentinel. So Defender for IoT allows you to do that. So you're bridging the IT and the OT and the IoT world together in one pane of glass. That's the selling point with, with Sentinel. It allows you to bring all that data together. I'm just going to skip through this to hunting because I've started to touch on it. Um, what this allows you to do is just, oop, gone too far, one second. Skip back one slide so I can just cover that last point. Let's go. There we go. So you can run in already pre built threat hunting queries, um, but what typically will be happening here is your SOC provider, your SIM provider, your MSSP will be running their own queries within your, your estate, just making sure nothing further is going on. So you can see there's, there's a number of queries there, you get a bit of results, um, you get bookmarking, you could be running these queries on live data coming in. And it's it, again, it's really, really powerful to do that advanced threat and then to, to use all that enrichment, all that threat intelligence data you've got to just make sure within that estate that nothing serious is happening. Um, and you get the graphicals here. So these are the tactics. So what does tactics mean? Um, so in the MITRE attack framework, there will be certain tactics as you kind of move right or laterally towards that exploitation of data, um, domain owning, uh, persistence, so the APT side of things. Each one of those is going to have a mapping. It's got a serial number. Um, and that's what the tactics uh, kind of refer back to there. So if you were to hover that over live, it will tell you exactly what tactic the threat actor was using um, and what does that mean? What typically will they do next? Where will they go? Where do they come from? And, and graphically see that within in the estate um, and exploring data sets. So this is now getting into it in a little bit more, more detail. So using that KQL, Re, um, uh, query language to be able to to go into the estate, look at your data logs. So you've been compromised a year's time. Um, you've got 180 days worth of logs. You want to go back. You want to go back and make sure when that threat actor was in in the estate, what were they doing? If they were there, then start to build up maybe your evidence or your court case file, or to be able to present this to the authorities, to NCSC or another, you know. Nas national body that were are there just to see what what's gone on the IOC. If you've lost data, you need to be able to go and have a look when this occurred to make sure that you are now patched, you're now covered, um, and you know what did the timeline look like. So yeah, being able to go back using 
data sets, whether they're in cold storage or data archiving, or if they're still within the log analytics space, you can do that straight away um, using, you know, using the tooling that's, that's freely available. Uh, bookmarks and live stream. I so saw this is is being able to run these queries live as this as these data logs are pumping that information in. You're you're analyzing that data live because you, for instance, let, let's pick an example. So um, a zero days come out on Monday. Um, you you're on a an N plus fourteen day patch cycle. You haven't patched um, your uh, domain controller. Let's, let's go with domain controller. Um, and you know you're vulnerable for attack. It's got an external facing port for whatever reason, a maintenance port. So you may want your SOC to be able to bookmark and live monitor that data. They can use that this this tool in here using live streaming and bookmarks to be able to monitor that part of, of the estate for you. And you can work with them on, on how that works within an SLA agreement um, on how you notify them and do that. But it's certainly the capabilities there. Um, very real world example. I, I've been there and had to do that. Um, you know, unfortunately, zero days happen. The security researchers run the globe, uh, threat actors looking at them. You may not be able to patch certain systems. They may not be viable to patch them, but you may want to add a little bit extra monitoring around those those assets. Go. And Jupyter notebooks again, more more advanced threat hunting. This is. Definitely the tier two to tier three area. So the more advanced SOC um, analysts will be doing this. So mix in a bit of, uh, if you want Python, your KQL, your graphical interfaces, going away looking into the estate and geolocating anomalies for, the, for this example, and just be coming up with some custom custom uh, options of, of whatever your MSSP and SOC is, is looking to do. So this will be potentially their USP, so the unique selling point, why this partner over that partner, um, and, and yeah, th this is really um, a powerful, powerful tool, which you'd, you'd expect more of the, the advanced stuff to, to be going on. Um, you can yeah integrate the code, the graphics, visualization, text, and make them a really valuable tool for, for the threat and uh, really, really powerful. Um, so you've got Microsoft Security Analysts, uh, or you'll be able to import them from GitHub. So there's some more stuff there that you can pick up from the community and use what other people have used or recommended. Uh, Microsoft will give you some stuff out of the box to be able to do this, which again, is really, really powerful. Um, and again, yeah, you can save it and share it in, in different formats, um, bring external data sources. So again, it's not just the Microsoft products or, or tool in here, you can bring other stuff and other languages of, of choice within there, uh, not just the KQL. Automation, so I'm just gonna skim through this one quickly. Um, because this is again another really really powerful tool. I, I personally like this one. It's, uh, it gives you an idea of kind of this how, how easy it is to just put some automation or source of security operation and response. So this is the sole capability. So you know, looking at this example, um, there's an alert triggered in the Azure Security Center. What are we going to do? Right, let's create an instant in service now. Uh, what are we going to do then? Well, we need to message a SOC, the SOC channel on Teams. There's a, there's a bunch of SOC analysts in there. That's what we need to do. We then need to send an approval email. Um, there's a condition alert then below it. So, uh, you know, there's a an option that, you know, has that alert been sent? Yes, no. If it has, we want to block a certain number of um, IPs from this incident or alert. Um, and if it's true, yeah, you go down there and you do that. If it's not, you cl close the incident in service now. So, Really step by step, ladder logic options, working your way through to make this as easy or as complex as you want, depending on what the, the MSSP and the SOC analyst is going to be doing. There we go. So, out of the box, yeah, there's over 200 plus connectors. I think there's more like 300 now. You're able to trigger playbooks from it um, and just, just, just have a play around with, with the environment. Very, very powerful too. Um, it is kit, very KISS, so keep it simple, stupid. So it's something I really like. So re, as you can see, it's really user friendly um, for the SOC analysts to, to be able to play around with, to add that level of automation. What this is doing for your MSSP or for that really tired SOC analyst who's on his seven hour of an eight hour shift, um, really, really kind of getting in there, allowing that automation to reduce the alert fatigue. So this is just some of the examples I'm going to skim through in the interest of time of this because kind of covered this. This is kind of giving you all the, the information of, of the playbooks. So 
you know, what can you guys and girls go and do if you want to learn a little bit more about Sentinel, you want to learn a bit more about the Microsoft security stack. So there's some fundamental courses, SE 900s, really good course, high level overview of, of that security stack of the industry, of the sector. If you want to jump into a little bit more detail with Socket, Sentinel, the M365 Defender, the SE 200 is definitely the course for you to do. There's Ninja training, that's free, that's online, you can go and play around with that. Um, I'll share the slides and the links um, with, with the guys on the call after this. So if anyone is interested, more, more than welcome, I'd really encourage you to go and have a play. Um, this is the kind of the end-to-end -end certification. So there is the SE100 that's in beta, so that's the expert exam that's due out this, oh, it might be out already actually. Um, and then some additional resources. So typically with Microsoft, everything's on Microsoft Docs. You can go there, there's uh, YouTube channels, there's ninja training across all the products that you can get, you know, jump in and have a real good good play around with and have a look and, and just tease it out really, what, what you're interested in. Cool, that is me all done. Thank you very much.